Whenever we have two different perspectives on the same situation, this can lead to conflict. Conflicts in private or business situations are often asymmetrical and can get out of control, and the negative emotions involved can prevent both parties from being impartial. If conflicts escalate, a process of arbitration is necessary. Traditional court proceedings are costly and can have many negative consequences for the reputation of those involved, especially for companies. Mediation can be an out-of-court alternative. So what is mediation? A conflict situation arises when two parties fail to agree. By engaging a mediator as a neutral third party, the participants receive professional support along their path to an agreement. Mediation is future-oriented and solution-oriented, the goal being to reach an understanding that is based on consensus among all parties. Mediation is a planned process that passes through several phases, each with its own focus and goals. After an introductory phase of getting to know each other, topics are raised that reveal each party's subjective view of the conflict. After this, relevant solutions are identified together and formalized in a written agreement. In a special setting, a mediation triangle is created in which all parties can face each other independently and on an equal footing. Mediation follows three basic principles. Willingness. Those involved should want to take part voluntarily and feel no compulsion to participate. Confidentiality. Mediation should create a confidential atmosphere in which those involved feel safe. Personal responsibility. The parties to the dispute are themselves responsible for developing solutions together. This means that the mediator only gives suggestions and initiatives in order to address concrete issues raised. He or she has a duty to represent the interests of both parties equally and is therefore impartial. The mediator's task is to design and moderate the communication and the interaction process. It's the disagreeing parties that are regarded as experts on the contentious issues and they assume responsibility for ensuring that all topics and points of view are identified and dealt with. The communication process itself is structured and regulated. Communication should promote the appreciation of different opinions and needs and thus generate empathy and respect. Active listening enables the mediator to take on board the thoughts and feelings of those involved. This makes hidden problems and open questions visible. Here it's important to emphasize the informative core of a message. To do this, the mediator reformulates judgmental and hurtful statements and reproduces them in a neutral way. The aim of mediation is therefore to look for a common solution that does not conform to a winner-loser perspective. Mediation is becoming increasingly relevant, especially in business. Due to the advancing global networks and global corporate mergers, teams are becoming more intercultural and diverse. In particular, intercultural situations can often be misleading and confusing and thus foster conflicts, which in turn can jeopardize corporate success. This is Carl. Carl works for a global company that had recently merged with another company. His team has changed a lot as a result and many new employees have arrived. One of them is Yasmin. Yasmin works different hours due to her religious practices and often takes short breaks in between working time. Carl recently noticed that Yasmin was also granted additional vacation days. Carl is frustrated and feels unfairly treated. Yasmin, on the other hand, does not comprehend why Carl has no understanding for this. Over time, the conflict between Yasmin and Carl grows, which damages the working atmosphere. One afternoon, the conflict between the two escalates. This means that teamwork is no longer possible. The company decides to engage a mediator to resolve the conflict. But something is different here. We are in an intercultural context. With conflicts in which people of different cultures interact, there is a higher level of complexity. This also changes the conflict resolution process. But what is intercultural mediation? Intercultural mediation takes place when participants in a conflict have been socialized in a different cultural environment. Interculturality arises from the interaction between members of different cultures. 
Cultures represent living environments that generate normality and plausibility for people. Living environments include material products as well as a system of attitudes, values and norms. They determine different thinking processes, behavior and communication styles. These differences can also be found in intercultural dialogue and must therefore be taken into consideration in intercultural mediation. The mediator plays a key role in this. In addition to their strategic competence, the mediator also needs a high degree of intercultural competence. This means that they must have the ability to guide the parties through an intercultural process and be able to act in a culturally sensitive and effective manner beyond the norms of their own culture. In order to shape the ongoing communication process in a targeted manner, the mediator must also be familiar with the culturally specific communication styles of the parties involved. This makes it clear that both the mediator's behavior as well as the method of intercultural mediation need to be highly flexible in their structure. In our example, the interculturally competent mediator Having been able to contextualize the conflict in a culturally sensitive manner, managed to resolve the disputes between Carl and Yasmin satisfactorily for both sides. The mediator allowed both parties to access the intercultural communication process and enabled them to recognize their differences and to negotiate new rules for working together. They have now agreed on a flexible break arrangement for all employees and the company has agreed to the introduction of flexible working hours. Carl and Yasmin are now very satisfied with their cooperation and have been able to develop their problem-solving skills through participation in conflict resolution. Through the bilateral learning process in mediation, they also managed to increase their intercultural competence, which will enable them to deal appropriately with conflicts in intercultural contexts in the future. In addition, their company was able to develop a constructive conflict culture through careful handling of the intercultural conflict which in turn will help to enhance its performance as a successful global company in the future.